Ahoy, mateys! Sup, nerds? I'm Tom. We're talking about Bermuda Pirates, which is a dexterity almost kind of game. Uh, it's kind of a kid's game, but adults can play it too. Definitely like a drinking-ish type of game. Um, and actually, there was another game that we played that was kind of the similar type of concept, but very different execution, where... Um, it was called the 13 thir Treasures 13 of... Islands, the I Treasure of the 13 Islands or something yeah. by Haba. Um, in that game, you had your eyes closed and you were pushing something with your finger on a board that had a bunch of holes in it and you were trying to avoid the holes. In here, you're pushing something with your finger that has a magnet in it. There's a bunch of magnets randomly put underneath the board. So you don't really, you're just trying to get, I want to get, oh! And your ship sank. Mm -hmm. you, you, ran a, you ran aground and you lose all your treasure you got to start over. So yeah, the, the object of the game is to collect all four treasure types. So you need to push your way along, trying to avoid all of these hidden magnets. But, they're, you know, they're just, it's debris in the water. And try to, you know, stop at each port, pick up a thing, and make it back. And it's it's way tougher than it seems because there are a lot of magnets in these boards. Mm -hmm. And like, Well, after you find a magnet you can uh, put a little buoy out there, but you only have three buoys each. And really, that's not enough buoys for all the magnets that are out there. Yeah, so you, you definitely have to like just make a mental map. You're like, okay, well, this one I keep running into, so I'm going to put this one here so that I like can really narrowly avoid it. But I know there's one there. I'm just not going to go that way. It's mostly a dexterity game because you have to use one finger pushing the boat from behind, mm -hmm. which means that like turning around is really hard. A lot of people will... like run into these flags when you finally mm -hmm. make it here and you're like okay i gotta turn turn around you're like uh, 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 what do i do and then you're just, you're just running aground yeah and it, you know it's kind of like every other player there kind of uh you know communally says you know come on man you ran you definitely hit that you you were kind of close we'll let you we'll let that off um but yeah if you can't you can't just like move push from the side or whatever you have to keep pushing forward from the back and like try and try and spin it like that so you know there's it's more than just memory it's memory and ability now when you're playing with this with kids i guess you could relax on that rule a little bit let them turn it around from the side but when you're playing with adults you get serious and you're like oh. no also it's very important to note that the other magnet and the boat is actually so the boat curves up at the front as boats do and the magnet is kind of at the front of the curve forcing the boat down so the back comes up because these gems are really really tiny which i guess is one complaint that they are really tiny i know it's necessary because they they are on the boat and when you come by and they hit the magnet they fling and they really do fling far and then they're lost at sea so other players can come and pick up those ones mm -hmm. um from, from the middle of the board um so I really like that. I think that's a very clever mechanism that they fling out. And actually only one time, somebody who was pushing the boat really slowly, like the magnet was already like kind of sort of in the field and they pushed it so slowly that it, it jolted forward slowly and I didn't see them fling off. So I'd almost kind of recommend you put a timer on this game or something. <laughs> that would make it even more intense. You're like, you can't take 20 minutes for a turn because this game's only supposed to take 20 minutes. It's definitely very quick paced because once you hit that magnet, you die. Well, you don't die. You just, you lose that ship and you got to start over back at your island. Over and over, it's it's kind of uh, like Groundhog's Day. You're just like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it this time. I'm going to make it. Oh, dang it. <laughs> now, that, that is one problem is that if you keep, if the game lasts too long... Somebody could more or less find a path and, and, you know, keep using that path. Now, of course, you have to go to all every single port here. So that path is going to have to maneuver. But they can take the path like most of the way and then find a new path. But so like they're gaining knowledge every time. They're like, so I'm going to take this path to here. I'm going to take the same path to, oh, there's a magnet right there. I'm going to take the same path to, okay, I avoided that magnet. Now I got to the red. Mm -hmm. So that is a potential negative. Um, there is an advanced variant where you guys are atta like attacking each other. So, you know, not only when I go and get a treasure and bring it back, um, I gained that that treasure. Now, in the basic game, you're just trying to get one of each color. And here you're trying to get, a certain, I think it's eight points. And having one of each color is six points. And then each one by themselves is um, one point. So, you, you, you're, you know, you're incentivized. You have, it, it'll make it last a little bit longer. And, you know... You're incentivized to now steal from each other. You can go back to the port and take somebody else's treasures that they already got. And that's fine. 
But I do think that this is leaned a bit more towards kids. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Yeah, it can be a a drinking game, but outside of you drinking while you're playing it with a bunch of adults, it does feel a little kiddie. One positive for the magnet layout is that the underboard is made up of four other boards, so like the magnet distribution will always be a little different. So if somebody's played this, they're not going to be like, okay, I want to start in the green corner uh, because reasons. They're not going to like know exactly where to go. It's going to be a little different every time you play. But it is definitely leaned more towards kids to learn like their fine motor skills of like slowly pushing the boat and, you know, learning how to collect sets of colors because, you know, you want to collect all four. Like it's <laughs> it's very, you know, the, the lessons they're trying to teach are very kid friendly kitty like yeah and i mean it works it's definitely a great kids game kids will love it those um especially when they fling (laughs) yeah the gems will fling out but that is i do think that that is a bit of a negative is that they are so tiny and they do they're not going to fling off the board you know they're not going to go off the table they don't fling that far so that's not too much of a problem but they are easy to lose if you if you open up the box and you and you drop them you know, your feet are going to hurt. Your feet are going to hurt. Again, I know it's necessary for the game, so it's not really something that they can fix, but that is a little caveat, something to know. Also, there are the, there's a, a four peg little thing in the center that holds the four, because it's the four boards, right, of magnets underneath. So that creates the randomization. So I guess using that over and over and over again will kind of wear out the holes a little bit. But they do get covered with these flags. So you're probably not going to really notice that very much, to be mm-hmm. honest. So as silly as this game is, I definitely had some fun, you know, laughing at other people's misfortunes and, you know, trying to map out my path. It's not a game that's going to hit the table a ton for us. You know, maybe when, you know, nieces and nephews. Right. Or I do, I do kids, have like, 10. Yeah, I do have 10 nieces and nephews. So this is definitely a game I'm going to be playing with them. But outside of that, it's not a game that we're going to break out again. Probably. Well, for adults, for <laughs> yeah. adults, I would recommend beer <laughs> and, and a timer. Yeah, seriously. It, it would be a great activity for, for a, you know, drinking and a timer. But again, these germs are really small. So if you're too drunk and sloppy, you might f- end up eating them accidentally or something. <laughs> like, ooh, is this a roofie? Why would you roofie yourself? <laughs> if this game sounds like something you'd like to have at your next game night, we'll have a link in the description box down below where you can get yourself a copy. And hey, while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you'll never... Be bored.